Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel and it's time for this or that episode 11. You guys love this comparison series so much and I love doing them for you. So today we are going to be doing a comparison review between two super nourishing ceramide creams from Pyongyang Yul and of course the famous, my favorite, Illy Yoon. Then we're going to head over to a battle of green tea serums with Benton and Beauty of Joseon. And finally, stay tuned till the end for a sunscreen battle. You guys have been asking for this one. A comparison between the Purito Unscented Centella Sunscreen and the Keep Cool Bamboo Sun Essence. So if you're so ready to get your this or that on, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <music> First up, Pyongyang Yul Edo Cream Blue Label versus Illy Yoon Edo Concentrate Cream. Now, these are two super nourishing and gentle moisturizers that have ceramides in them and are really marketed towards sensitive skin. Let's explore the Pyongyang Yul Cream first. This is a shea butter based moisturizer. This is really important to know because this is different than the Illy Yoon. So it's very moisturizing, nourishing. It brings a lot of emollients into this moisturizer. This also contains ceramide MP. You know, ceramides are so essential for the health of your skin. They naturally make up 50% of your skin's moisture barrier. This is interesting, a uh, moisturizer that contains copper tripeptide one. Now you hear me talk about copper tripeptide L the one as the like golden standard in peptides for anti-aging. It's really good for regenerating the skin, helping to fight fine lines and wrinkles really keep your skin elastic and firm but it also does have a wound healing benefit as well which means again it can really help skin heal itself and regenerate itself so very interesting to find that in this ingredients list so the texture is super buttery and rich just as I think you might expect it to be uh, really creamy it spreads across the skin really nicely and for an emollient cream it actually has very good absorbency you don't have to work this into your skin your skin just <laughs> sucks it right up, <laughs> at least mine does, but it, it absorbs really, really nicely and it really does have that nice, nourishing, comforting moisture to it. There is just a little bit of silkiness left at the top of your skin, just a little bit, maybe a little bit of shininess for some of us just at the top, um, but it just feels so comforting on the skin. I do like this one a lot. There's a couple of reasons. I mean, it's just so nourishing on my skin. I do have combination skin, but my skin really does crave nourishment and emolliency, just not super thick and heavy. And so this cream has like got the perfect weight to it. Cause I'd say it's about a medium weight cream uh, with good absorbency, good moisturization, but it doesn't feel like a thick and heavy, like non-breathable layer on my skin. Some skincare can just feel too heavy. This delivers the nourishment, this delivers the, the moisturization, but still feels breathable. So my skin has just been like drinking it up, you know what I mean? And I do enjoy this even in the summertime, but I have to tell you, there is that little bit, just that little bit of that shiny finish at the top. It's hardly even shiny, but when you're producing some oil in your T-zone, which I am in the summertime, yeah, it can it can make you look a little extra shiny. So that's the only one like kind of drawback I would say to this cream. Okay, let's talk about the Illyune Edo Ceramide Concentrate Cream, which has been my top number one moisturizer for like basically a year now. I'm gonna make my bias in this moisturizer battle known, right? Like this is the one I've been going for all the time. So let's look at the ingredients here. Um, this does have ceramides, however, it uses pseudo ceramides or man-made ceramides. So it's gonna show up on the ingredients list under MEA and it literally is the exact same thing as ceramide MP or ceramide 3 which is the exact same ceramide being used in the Pyongyang Yul cream so really no difference here this also contains cholesterol and it has quite a variety of fatty acids on the list those of you who follow me for a long time know that I have like two catchphrases right one is um 
fragrance, essential oil, and alcohol-free. And the other one is ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. When it comes to moisture barrier health, you know I said ceramides are super important. Well, the ceramides are actually a lot more effective for your skin when they are found in combination with cholesterol and fatty acids. So especially for those of you who are maybe having a little bit of an episode of a weak moisture barrier, maybe you went a little bit too far with chemical exfoliation, you're feeling a little bit of extra dehydration. These are the types of ingredients you want to seek out, especially in like moisturizer types of products, because they really can help that moisture barrier become a little bit stronger, you know, sort of fortify, help it heal up. As you kind of start to spread this across your skin, you'll see some little white flakes. Now, this this is um, this is the ceramides. They're using a encapsulated technology. Basically, what that means is the ceramides are in capsules that are meant to a protect the efficacy of the ceramides, keeping them really effective and fresh, and also help deliver those ceramides deeper into the skin. Now, that's a really good thing, right? Because when we can get our skincare ingredients a little bit deeper, they can be more effective for helping our skin. I am unsure if this um, encapsulated technology is the secret sauce to this cream or if it's just a marketing gimmick. I honestly you just can't really answer that, um, but that is what you're gonna see in the cream. It also has very good absorbency. It really has a nice nourishing and emollient feel inside of your skin. And here's another difference with the Pyongyang Yol. There's no shininess at the top. That's actually what made me really fall in love with this cream immediately uh, when I first used it last year is because I was expecting such a nourishing and moisturizing cream to have a finish and this didn't and that made my combination skin super happy. So I love using this all seasons, even in the summertime when I crave emolliency on my skin, I can rest assured when I reach for this one that I'm not going to get more grease in my T-zone. So this is like super trustworthy for me. So this or that. And I have to tell you, you can probably tell these are so similar. They're more similar than they are different, which makes this this or that battle like really picky. <laughs> but there are actually three key differences that I found between these creams that I think for you guys at home who are thinking maybe I want one or the other, I think one of these three could be the deciding factor for you. So the first one we already talked about, the finish. The Pyongyang Yol, a little bit more shiny on the top of the skin. Iliun, really very neutral, no, no shine on the top of the skin. I will admit between the two formulas, the feel, um, and this may come down to that shea butter in the Pyongyang Yol, a little bit more emollient a little bit more nour nourishing with the Pyongyang Yol 80 cream than the Illy Yoon is. So I think if you're super, super dry skinned, the Pyongyang Yol is gonna feel so comforting and nourishing on the skin. If you're kind of like me, where you have a foot in both worlds, your combination, but you get a lot of dryness on your skin or you just love emollient moisturizers, the Illy Yoon might just might serve you a little bit better, especially if you live in a four seasons place where you can get a little bit more greasy one season, a little bit more dry another. The Iliun plays well, in my opinion, between all different types of seasons. The second thing is the price and size, right? Value and, and quantity. So the Pyongyang Yol, I mean, they're both very affordable products, don't get me wrong. The uh, Pyongyang Yol, you get 120 milliliters of moisturizer for around $17. The Iliun, you get more, you get about uh, 200 milliliters for about the same price. The third kind of difference here is for those of you who really want cruelty-free brands, Pyongyang Yol is a cruelty-free brand. I will uh, point out though, those who like vegan ingredients, there's some beeswax in this uh, moisturizer. So not vegan, but it is cruelty-free. Illy Yoon, on the other hand, is a part of the Amore Pacific uh, brand uh, family of brands. Uh, so they don't directly test on animals, but they do uh, sell in China. There's that whole China loophole, right? So they are not technically classified as cruelty free. So that may be a deciding factor for some of you guys out there as well. Let's move on to Benton Deep Green Tea Serum versus Beauty of Jozon Calming Serum. These are both serums containing a high amount of green tea. Now just transparency warning before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know that I did receive the Beauty of Jozon for a sponsored video that I've already done. I did that last month. If you guys want to check it out, please feel free to. I just want to let you know how I obtained the product this segment. this None of this is sponsored anymore, but I just wanted to kind of like 
be very clear about that. So let's explore the Benton first. This uses 50% of green tea water, first ingredient, and it also uses 35% of green tea extract coming from the seed, leaf, and root of green tea. Now green tea, I always say it has a lot of antis because it's antibacterial, it's anti-inflammatory, and it also um, is an antioxidant with anti-aging benefits. It's a good way to remember all of the amazing benefits of green tea. Now this formula also contains some great hydrating ingredients including panthenol, beta tin, it also has three different types of hyaluronic acid, plus this also contains some calming ingredients like Hutania cordata extract, it's excellent anti-inflammatory ingredient, I rave about this one a lot. This also has centella, willow bark, and matacasicide. I also found it interesting to find subaki oil and sunflower seed oil on this list. I wasn't expecting such moisturizing ingredients in this serum and that actually leads me into the texture which was also a surprise so when I got this out onto my hand for the very first time it was this really runny kind of gel like texture and as I worked it into my skin I was super surprised first of all it's very slippery kind of serum um, it, it just kind of like makes your hands glide super fast across your skin absorbs really nicely you start to feel this moisturization though this slip to the serum I just wasn't expecting that at all on the skin it feels incredibly balancing though it's it's got that burst of hydration on application and then once it absorbs you feel this really nice lightweight moisture so as some of you guys may know I'm a huge fan of the Benton deep green tea toner I've talked about that product a lot um, I've used it and relied on it a ton so I had high expectations for the serum right um, and it did not disappoint I'm really happy to report that super good at reducing inflammation on the skin it can really help when you get inflamed pimples it can reduce the size, the swelling, and the redness associated with that pimple. This actually is a really good calming serum on its own too. Like if you just have irritation but no pimples or acne, it's really good for that too. Remember, so many calming ingredients in here. I've been getting little minor bouts of irritation with the mask wearing, as I've shared with you guys, I get super dehydrated around my chin. It just makes my skin feel really itchy. And this is actually a really reliable serum for um, helping to calm that irritation, just kind of like soothe the skin. That was actually not something I was expecting from this product at all. I was expecting the, the anti-acne benefits, which I got, but surprisingly some nice calming benefits from this one too. And that texture, I wasn't, you know, it was like a, like a slightly moisturizing light gel texture. And I was like, how is this gonna play with my other skincare products? Beautifully, beautifully. It worked beautifully with everything. Um, I was just overall just super impressed with this and my skin is really enjoying this product. So let's talk about the beauty of Joseon uh, Calming Serum. So this contains 76% of green tea water and it has 2% of panthenol, which is such a great hydrator. This also has beta tin in it and a sugarcane extract, which are both really good um, humectants for the skin along with panthenol. They really draw a lot of hydration and bind it into your skin. This also also contains the calming ingredients centella mugwort and propolis so the texture is thicker than the Benton but it's still kind of like a runny almost gel like texture to the serum and it is super hydrating I mean run this across your skin you're gonna feel that burst of hydration and it gets in real deep you know especially that dehydrated skin you your skin will suck this up <laughs> really no moisture to this one you know this is not like a balancing serum or anything like that this is just a deeply hydrating and replenishing type of serum. It absorbs really nicely into the skin, no stickiness or tackiness at the top, and it feels very, very lightweight. It's just a very pleasing texture overall. It really calms, soothes, and comforts my skin while delivering lots of deep replenishing hydration, right? Like fight that dehydration dragon. The one thing I will tell you about this serum, I do think the redness reduction kind of benefits on this one are I would say average you know I, I do see that it is beneficial it's not my most reliable anti-redness uh, skincare product right but it's it's average there is a benefit where I think this one um, maybe doesn't really do as well as with the acne surprisingly um, I just when I use this one I don't really rely on this one when I get a pimple or inflammation or a lot of redness on my skin um, I'm reaching for other products 
not this one, but when I feel irritation, like I said, that mask irritation around my chin, this is perfect for that, which actually leads me into this or that. What do you want your serum to do for your skin? What benefits are you seeking? Because these have formulated green tea in two slightly different ways, bringing out, you know, one of many benefits for green tea. Benton, clearly this is using green tea's power for anti-acne, right? It's so anti-inflammatory, it's antibacterial, really going to help reduce the size of your pimple, help bring down the redness and the swelling of that pimple. And and it also has that calming and soothing benefit. So when, you're, when your acne can get kind of painful and irritated on your skin, this is really gonna help heal your skin in so many ways and still be super duper gentle. Even with that little hint of moisture, it's so lightweight on the skin. I can see this working across all skin types from super oily all the way up to dry skin. The beauty of Jozan, Really, it's all about the calming. It's all about the calming hydration with this serum, really harnessing the power of green tea to just really soothe the skin, you know, really hydrate the skin. That is what Beauty of Jozan is really harnessing. Remember, it's also using a good amount of panthenol, which is an, a, an excellent humectant for the skin. So this is a little bit more geared towards those with more dehydrated skin, irritated skin. Maybe you're not dealing with as many pimples and acne. This is going to be the green tea serum for you guys. So the function on these are just a little bit different. I am pleased to say these are both super affordable products and they they actually um, come in the same size so 30 milliliters for both and they average about between about 13 all oh, the highest price probably about $17 for these so still super affordable and finally you guys have requested this this or that since I started talking about the keep cool and soothe bamboo Sun essence you are all been asking me how does it compare to the Purito Centella green level unscented sunscreen now these are both chemical sunscreens and they're both rated SPF 50 plus PA plus four. Now, have you ever wondered, just like side note, fun fact, have you ever wondered why it says SPF 50 plus? What is that extra plus? Like what's with all the pluses? <laughs> well, I guess I found out that this, this basically means that they have tested the sunscreen. They wanted to ensure that you were 100% getting SPF 50. So they have actually formulated it to be a little bit closer to SPF 60. <laughs> and that's what the plus means. It means more than SPF 50. 50. So fun fact. Now these sunscreens are so similar. I mean, the texture and the feel and the wear, it's all really similar. One of the biggest differences though, really has to come down to the chemical filters that they're using, which is a big one, right? So um, they actually both use the same UVA filter, which is Uvinyl A+. Now this provides high UVA protection and it's very photo stable. This is considered to be a new generation chemical filter now I mean what what do I mean when I say that right like why what what are these generations so the first generation of chemical filters include things like avobenzone um, these are chemical filters that every like bad rap that uh, chemical sunscreens have gotten is because of those old filters like the potential for irritation on the skin the fact that they're not very uh, photo stable they can break down really quickly in the presence of UV right none of that is very good um, and all of that can be left with the old generation the new generation has been formulated to kind of go against all of the bad things, right? They're a lot more kind on the skin. They're a lot more sensitive, skin friendly, and they are incredibly more photo stable. They offer way more protection than those over there, right? So that's what I mean when I say new generation, I just mean better. So both use Uvinyl A+. Now Purito combines that with Uvinyl T150, and this is actually offering the highest photo stability of UVB protection that's like available today. It is an incredibly stable UVB filter. Now Keep Cool, on the other hand, they are combining their Uvinyl A+, with Tanosorb S, which is, Excellent. This is a really good chemical sunscreen filter because it offers broad spectrum protection, which means it has uh, UVA protection and UVB protection, and it's incredibly photo stable. In fact, it is really regarded to be one of the best chemical filters available, offering some of the highest protection. Now, the textures are super similar, but this is this or that, so I got to get real nitty gritty picky, right? So, with that in mind, I would say that the Keep Cool 
tool is slightly lighter on the skin. Not only a lighter uh, in texture, but also lighter in weight um, on the skin. Again, these are very minute differences, but I would say that the Keep Cool has a very refreshing, kind of cooling, almost even like a hydrating feel as you um, apply this to your skin. Super, super breathable, uh, no white cast, no pilling. It's really easy to reapply, um, no irritation. I mean, just everything that we don't like about sunscreens, this really just doesn't even go into that territory. I found this really easy uh, sunscreen to wear. This doesn't have like a like a glowiness or a dewiness or a glass skin finish to it at all. It's quite a neutral finish on the skin. I do find sometimes those sun essences have a little bit more shininess to them. This one doesn't have it and I think that that's great. Now Purito on the other hand, it is still super lightweight, but I gotta almost describe this more like a lightweight cream texture. It does not Hill. It's really easy to reapply. There's no white cast here. There's no irritation. It wears really nicely on the skin. But of course, um, right up next to that Keep Cool, it does have a little bit more of a thicker appearance. So this or that. And I have to tell you, you know, Keep Cool on paper really appears to be the winner. And the reason that I say that is because of Tinosorb S. That was the other chemical filter that they used in their sunscreen. And it really is excellent. It's a really compelling sunscreen uh, agent because it is so photostable. It is so protective. It is really just up and coming one of the best. And so on paper, looking at these sunscreen filters, Keep Cool looks like a much better sunscreen. I mean, I am not a super like outdoorsy person. I'm outside a couple of times a day walking my dog, uh, you know, up around the block for a while. Um, so I get enough sun exposure and both of these as day, what I would call a daily sunscreen, right? I'm not going to the beach. I'm not swimming. I'm not hiking. I'm staying out for long hours at a time. As a daily sunscreen, both of these perform exactly the same in my opinion. Um, I feel equally protected with both formulas. You know, the texture of the Keep Cool, again, getting super nitty gritty picky here, it's a little bit nicer. It's a little bit more elegant. It's a little bit lighter on the skin. The Purito one is so good though too. And up until discovering the Keep Cool, that was my favorite texture of a sunscreen. So it just edges ahead slightly. But here's, here's the flip side of it. Purito is a way better value for your wallet. I mean, Purito, you get 60 milliliters of product around the $14 mark for a tube of sunscreen. Keep cool, 50 milliliters of product for $25. So a really big difference in price. So this or that, you know, maybe Keep Cool is between the two, the more elegant, the more sophisticated formula between the two. But honestly, my wallet is still choosing Purito. <laughs> I am really revealing my true colors here, am I not? Um, I like to save my money. I go through so much sunscreen uh, throughout the year that having an affordable one on my side is what I need. And Purito serves all of my needs at a price point my wallet is happy with. If I can get Keep Cool on a sale, I will bring that one in. But um, the differences are so minute between the two in my personal experience that I'm going to keep going for the more affordable one. Ooh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I love putting them together. So as always, let me know what you want to see on the next episode of This or That. Just let me know in the comments. If you love the video, but you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing. I release two new Korean skincare focused videos every single week. Turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any content from me or the next episode of This or That. And if you want to connect with me further, come join me on Instagram. It's like my home away from YouTube, if you will. I hang out there all the time posting in my stories and on my feed about all my skincare adventures. So I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I really hope that you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.